Well, we thought we lost. It was a, it was a competition open to any architect registered in British Columbia, yeah. as I recall. Uh, and there were about 80 entrants, I believe. And we, uh, the, the main thing was the, pro the program we didn't agree with. Yeah. It would, it would, it basically, the program was for, for, for five buildings to yeah. be located on the mountain someplace. And um, we uh, felt that this was silly. Uh, they, they, uh, we sh they shouldn't. Uh, it, they should. It should be amalgamated. No, no plan at all. No, no plan. No. No idea of what faculties they wanted or anything else. We. Well, there was the faculty. No. Were there no faculty? We. You know, with there were the with five buildings, but each one was one for one th science, one for yeah arts and so forth, and yeah. the library, and, and then they, these were just to be located, sort of, yeah. but not, uh, not, as a, as not cohesively, and uh, we didn't agree with that. So, uh, I had a certain advantage because uh, in my last year at McGill, I had done a, um, a history thesis on Oxford and Cambridge. And so I was fami familiar with those universities and felt that that was a very sensible way to look at universities. And, you know, I was really, I, I didn't have the faith or interest in the traditional Canadian or North American university. And, um, so we went through all sorts of uh, analyses to see how we could accomplish this. Also, I mean, it was on a mountain top, with all the difficulties of getting to the top of the mountain and everything else. Parking. There was a jury. It was to select five firms to do, to do the five buildings, one to do each building. But the uh, jury recommended that uh, that our plan was superior to anything else that was being submitted, and that we should be the master planners for the university. Do a part, be architects for a part of it, mm -hmm. and and supervise the design of the other of the other for architects. To make sure that everything was related. And really, we were talking about a single building uh, with many branches and different levels and things like that, so that it had to be linked. And we had to provide the actual elevation at which each of the uh, faculties would be tied into the overall network of the university. The science complex was always there. And <coughs> the way we thought about it was that there would be a uh, general <coughs> arts complex, which would be on the north side of the campus, and the science complex would be on the south side of the, of the campus. And there'd be a spine joining every part of, the, uh, of this master plan. <coughs> and then, of course, the library, sit, library, which was a sort of a spe specific building, would be located adjacent to the, to the spine. But the big problem was to locate the spine, really. Yeah. Initially. Initially. And we went up. We sort of were in the middle of the forest. We couldn't see anything. And uh, we said, well, let's cut a, 
uh, clearing right through here and uh, and then let's look at that clearing and see what we see at the other end and luckily <coughs> what we saw at the other end was the Lionsgate Bridge mm -hmm. and so we thought well that's perfect <laughs> so that became the spine of the university well there are a lot of things about the university but that you don't know about <laughs> <laughs> it was the it was the ridge of the ridge of the mountain really and it happened to point it, Exactly at the landscape bridge. Yeah. Well, every, it was to step down the. The idea was that it was to step down the mountain. Yeah. Ev eventually, it didn't. Now it's they've gone off on another tangent. But mm. well, everything was different because we did, had, had no faith in the traditional universities, mm -hmm. and we wanted to realize what we felt was the proper way, which was based on the Oxbridge experiment. And uh, and I guess the only thing was the continuous covered walks between all parts of the university, which with the climate on the mountain here, we felt was absolutely essential. Well, I disagree with it because mm -hmm. I think it's in the wrong location. Uh, you know, the, the whole idea of the campus was that the, the university city would be at the west end rather than the east end. And, uh, and, and around the... Uh, Around, around the lower slope, yeah. So sort of wrapping around below the university, which but would have been quite feasible. The city, uh, city of Vancouver, owned a, a cemetery site there, yeah. which they were prepared to uh, part with, and uh, and now the rest of the land was owned by Burnaby. It could have all been developed, and the planner of, of the city of Burnaby was very in much in favor of this. But uh, I'm afraid that Dr. Schramm wasn't. Yeah. He, 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 you know, he said, look, concentrate on the university, on the buildings. This is uh, what's got to get done. Don't digress into other things like, like, the, uh, like uh, housing. Well, I think we set up the uh, uh, stipulation that everything had to be concrete uh, because it was the cheapest way to build mm -hmm. and uh, the most permanent, fireproof, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what else? Well, for the most part, it's, I mean, to, to a great extent, it's gone the way we wanted. The mall, mm. when we did the mall, it, end, it ended at the uh, sort of central entrance. Yes. And it was cut off there very, very uh, deliberately, brutally by us. <coughs> I mean, you know, the practically the pipes there, every, everything was set to carry on the same way, and it has. Yeah. And the same applies to the to the gym too. It was extended, wasn't it? The same way. And um, but you were responsible for the extension of the mall. You, yes, you, you did yeah. that. Yeah, much la much later. Much later. Much later. Yeah. And all the class all the classrooms that are on the uh, on the north side, you mm -hmm. you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to get some unity in the design. The first thing we did was to, um, in our office, build a model that was, what, how many feet long? Oh, it's been eight feet to 10 feet long. No, 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 it was 40 feet long. Oh, that one, that, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It was at the... Um, in our office, right? Yeah. But then it came to the university. Did it? Yeah. And it was in De Vries. That's the name I was trying to say. Oh, Bill De Vries. Yeah. Bill De Vries. His office for a long time. And uh, so the idea was that we had to have these other architects uh, put their building in next to our model. And so the, be the best way to control what they did was to have a model built and uh, which would determine the size, the elevation of the main floors and roof and everything else. And uh, so this became um, a very effective way of relating the different parts of the university as it grew, because the, um, the the mall was only half built in the first phase, and uh, so that had to be finished as as a square. You know, I thought at least politically it works for um, student uh, protest. <laughs> yes. Well, we were blamed for that, too, weren't we? Yeah. Kind of protest at UBC. I don't know where you'd protest. No, exactly. <laughs> or, or at Oxford or Cambridge, for that matter. <laughs> and many of these things were influenced by buildings I had visited in, in Europe. And, uh, for, for instance, the, 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 um, not the mall, but the uh, quadrangle was was very much influenced by the um, University of Salamanca, uh, which had a similar quadrangle. And uh, I rem remember that the You know, the whole idea was to make it as simple as possible so that um, the we would have very little difficulty in coordinating, which was our job at that point, uh, the work of other architects uh, coming onto the site. and. Uh, And it was easy to demonstrate to them with the model, whether their building fit or didn't fit. And uh, so it was our biggest um, ally in convincing the architects that they had to follow the general uh, architecture of the whole university. I think what has happened, too, though, is when we went in, in the initial stages, there was no faculty, uh, virtually no faculty. Yeah. Um, and, and the staff consisted of Bill de Vries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there was anybody else. And um, so there was no outside influences uh, uh, getting at the arch getting at these various architects, telling them what they what they wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's a very different story. I think a, an architect working here now, who said I want I wanted to to do follow exactly our sort of parameters, mm. would have a, a hard time because oh, sure. he would yeah. be. He'd be so much influenced by the uh, 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 by the requirements of the faculty, which which didn't exist then. And Shrum, Dr. Shrum, deliberately did not uh, hire faculty or any staff because it was quicker to just. He, he wanted to do it all himself. 
<laughs> he was the influence. Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was it. And, he, and so long as we didn't blot our copybook too mm. much, he allowed us a free hand. No, he, 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 he just wasn't interested. The sort of free enterprise mm -hmm. public part of the housing. He wasn't interested and he thought it was a, a digression from, uh, from this campus that we were supposed to get built. And there was a terrific, we were under terrific time constraint. Two, we had two years from the time of the competition to the time the university opened. And uh, this has never, I don't think mm. it's ever been, d ever been uh, done before or since. Yeah, it was called the Institute. It was done all for $17 million too, which yes. was, was, <laughs> was really amazing. <laughs> he was not that visionary because he was, I remember his saying when he, uh, was looking at the various uh, entries that he didn't know how to judge them uh, and uh, he, <coughs> he, he really left it up to the advisors of the competition and uh, Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Yeah. But uh, but but to his credit, they the the jury d d went with the plan that we had in 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 our submission, recommended that it be adopted, and he stuck with it. Uh huh. Well, the others were so far, so backwards, compared to ours. You know, ours was the only visionary idea that really looked at education and how it should be taught. And we were trying to get it as close to the Oxbridge situation as possible. I would say the program for the uh, for the competition was more modeled on UBC than. Oh yeah. That was really the. Oh. You know, but we changed that. We we changed that. Yeah. But I mean, the, the program that they had, they had put in uh, that was as of, of development as the, as it was outlined in the competition uh, requirements. They were just looking backwards at UBC and saying, well, you know, we're building for this and a building for that. Mm -hmm. My office did the landscape plan for that area, and uh, and it's been carried out. And the Fraser is one of the big sources of jade in BC, and a lot of it is sent to China and other places where it can be used. Somebody gave it. To, uh, it was donated. Oh yeah, we ne never would have persuaded. It never. Uh, it was not in the budget to buy jade. <laughs> um, and uh, but it, jade doesn't look like anything unless it's wet. There's supposed to be sp yes. spray. It doesn't look. It just looks like any other rock. Yeah. Well, that that we, we had the whole campus revolting against it. But they uh, put up a lot of money yeah. to build the first uh, residences on the south side and sort of bought themselves a, what they thought was a prime site. And they were going to do whatever they wanted, uh, which is what, what was built. We wanted it. We didn't object to the gas station per se, but we wanted it tucked in against the road facing north so you really wouldn't have seen it but uh and but it was unsuc i ga i gather it was just a, unsuc as a gas station very unsuccessful you think you think with the huge amount of traffic here and people wanting their car serviced and whatnot it wouldn't be a bad it wouldn't be a bad place but 
up to be. Uh -huh. I think where we fell down, if, if, if uh, so to speak, is the par is the, on the parking. Yeah, but we were trying to get parking under every building. Yeah. And that would have solved the parking problem. But, you know, that was too expensive and... Uh, we had parking sort of on the uh, east end. Mm -hmm. So it was always considered temporary. Yeah. But um, we had all sorts of schemes to really we felt the transits, the, the, the transit system would have, a really good transit system would have taken care of a lot of it. And the parking could have been down at the bottom of the mountain. Or, um, perhaps this was an in, unrealistic to think that. We also w worked uh, on a scheme where on the north side we would tunnel in and put high-speed elevators up. Because yes. the mountain is very steep there, and it would have been feasible to have gone in and then gone up with a high-speed elevator and then park on the... There is a, uh, quite a bit of sort of flat land down on that, on that road down there and, the par and park down there. But uh, this would have been pretty costly, I guess, and it was never... We, we never got too far with it. But I think that, that Simon Fraser draws from such a vast area that people have to drive. I don't know where they park if they take the transit. The university should be as urban as possible and as compact as possible. And I was very pleased during the early period when there were all the riots throughout North America in, in universities uh, to find that Simon Fraser was relatively common. And I did hear from uh, people, who, uh, students who were th here at that time, that it was very easy to communicate with your associates or whatever and uh, and therefore problems were solved right away and they weren't allowed to fester as they would have had uh, if there had been difficulties in communication between students and faculty and administration etc cetera, etc cetera. so I was pleased to hear that that it had actually worked out as a very urban place. And that was the intention from the beginning. Yeah, my father was a, um, what do you call it, paraplegic? And, uh, and so he was very much in mind because, you know, we had to help him flights of stairs and things like that. So we, we tried to make it as feasible as possible. And I think our more, most recent experiment at uh, Robson Square, where we use the ramps in combination with stairs, was a further development of that idea. As I started to say, the intention was to make the university campus as compact as possible. And the exchange of disciplines as open as possible so that students were aware of uh, the various aspects of university education. And having graduated from McGill and also UBC, where neither of those things exist, um, it seemed important that that's what the university should do as much as possible. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the social unrest, or whatever you would like to call it, that, that did go on here in uh, 
was subsequent to our involvement, mm. really. So we really had nothing yeah. to do with it. Yes, but they blamed us. Yeah, they, oh, they blamed us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think also, as, uh, as architects, you, you're, you're, you have a responsibility to, to your client. And uh, you don't get in, uh, one would n not want to get involved in anything like that in any case, no matter what one felt. That when, when we, uh, when the mall roof was, the assembly started, it became a, uh, uh, apparent that the the nuts weren't fitting properly on the on the rods, and it turned out that they they weren't uh, the th the threading was not as specified, and uh, so they all had to be re these rods all had to be replaced. Um, that that was and done. The glass was the same. Now, the glass, uh, yes. Though the the snowfall, it was in the first year. Yeah, was I think it's the heaviest. It's, I don't think there's been one heavier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to my knowledge, since since then. Uh, and uh, a lot of the glass broke. Uh, we subsequently found out that it was wired uh, Georgian, what's called Georgian wired glass, and the uh, wire instead of being central to the glass, was, uh, was off-center off on the wrong s on the, uh, on the top side, oh. so that it, it, was, yeah. yes, it, it, it didn't have the strength that it should have had. Um, but the university, in its wisdom, decided that they would uh, Rather than uh, replace the glass, they would uh, make the the bar replace the bars, or insert a, a, an intermediate bar. So now they're one foot on centers. They were two feet on centers. I hate to criticize the university, but I don't. I think their their maintenance of the, of uh, is is poor. I mean, you walk you walk down the mall and you find chipped concrete and places which need to be re paving which needs to be repaired and make it a very what can I say uh, accessible mm -hmm. institution and uh, where dissidence was appreciated and uh, and the whole campus worked together yeah. Yeah, very much.